Welcome, everybody. It's the BKBK podcast where sports and the culture collide and the New York Jets reign supreme. I'm your host, Brandon Phillips, and I have a phone ringing in the background. Yes, you do. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yeah, my house phone's ringing in the background, but that's all right. But uh, you know why it's all right? It's because I'm joined by my fellow co hosts, Brian Taylor you. and Captain Kyle McKenna. Unfortunately, Terry. AKA Idris Taylor could not make it today, but uh, we'll hold it down for him. We love you, Kerry. All right. So um, we're going to get right to it, guys. All right. This episode, I named it New Beginnings. We titled this episode New Beginnings because it's a new beginning of the, uh, of the league year. And it's a new philosophical approach to trying to get into the playoffs for the New York Jets. Is it? And also... We've got some new players on the team and some new players that we're looking at. All right, so let's dive in. All right, I wonder who some of these new players are. I wonder who's like uh, at the tops of the new player depth chart for the New York Jets. Not depth chart, but for uh, hopeful acquisitions, so to speak. Hmm. Um, I wonder. You know? Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> so as everybody knows in the NFL and every single Jet fan knows, and you wouldn't be a Jet fan if you didn't know this, but of course we've got Aaron Rodgers at the top. Um, before, we all knew that Aaron Rodgers was at the top and he was being considered because there were other QBs out there. And, you know, there's back and forth debate, this and that, why, why not, this and that. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I didn't want Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Um, I didn't want him. Um, I wanted uh, Derek Carr. He was at the top of my list. He's younger. He's a good quarterback. Um, he's not great like Aaron Rodgers, but he's good. But he's never been put in a great situation. And um, his defense that he's played with on his teams throughout his whole Raiders career, they've all been terrible. They've averaged um, 26 points uh, per game being scored on. And it's always hard to come back from that if your defense can't do anything. So um, I think he's been given more of an unfair shake as far as people judging his inability to be um, a better than average quarterback. I think he's better than average. I think he's very good. Yeah. I don't think he's great. I, I don't think he's great, but I think he's very right. good. And um, I think with the right defense behind him and the right offensive scheme, he could have done something with the New York Jets. But we lost him to New Orleans. Uh, my second... Uh, uh, you know, well, well, well. Did, did we lose him to New Orleans, or did we just kind of let him go because Aaron Rodgers was the per person we ultimately wanted to go for anyway? We shall never know the real answer to that. That that well, you know yeah. what? I, I I think it's true what Brian is saying, and I think I'm using the wrong word in saying we because we BKBK. I think most of us didn't really want Aaron Rodgers. Cool. But I'm going to say the Jets wanted him more than I, any. I, I don't even know if that's accurate here. So I, I know that I was one that said Aaron Rodgers was the top of my wish list, right? Uh, Derek, right? It was. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, So I was out there and uh, went out on a limb, right? Because uh, I know Brandon, as he, you know, so eloquently stated, did not, um, was not on the top of his wish list. Uh, I know uh, Kerry, I can speak for him in that regard, that A-Rod was not on the top of his list. Kyle, I, I, I don't recall where you stood. I think you stood with me. I saw which which made it 50-50. Is that right? I would I would say it was closer to with you. Um but not but more in an indifference type of way. Uh I, I kind of uh felt as though uh Derek Carr wouldn't be a bad idea. Um but then I got into the whole oh can we get Lamar Jackson you know, pried away from the Ravens conversation as well. And now with um, with the, the Aaron Rodgers thing falling this way, I, I feel a little bit better about it. Um, but uh, I wouldn't quite say I was on the Aaron Rodgers train to, from the get-go, and that's more so not because of Aaron Rodgers' play, but um, just because of his overall, like, personality. Um not not the hugest fan of his uh broness, I guess. Um and uh you know, like the way that things went last year 
when he was when he was kind of in the the if you look at last year and you look at this year off season wise it's always been an Aaron Rodgers type of story at the top of the sports center hour right so he's kind of done that again but when you take the football player um I'm okay with it because I think that he's going to have a lot around him and that uh he, he will help develop what can be developed of Zach Wilson. Well, and, and so my, my thing is this, I, I think uh, my rationale was he's the best option, right? I mean, when you talk about somebody that can play elite football at the quarterback position, uh, he's always been that option. Derek Carr. Yes. Uh, a good option. He's not bringing the Aaron Rodgers effect, right? Positive and negative. Positive is that players are drawn to him and want to play with him, right? So when you think about OBJ wanted to play for us, you think of Alan Lazard, who's already signed and in the building. Um, maybe McCole Hardman is a little bit of maybe he doesn't come here if not for Aaron Rodgers being an option at quarterback. Um, I don't see people gravitating towards Derek Carr and and you know and the Saints right now, right? I, I don't see other players saying, hey, I want to go there because, you know. Best Derek receiver Carr. in the game did it last yeah. year. Devontae Adams, the best receiver in the game, did it last year. Okay, well, he played with him in college. I mean, so I think that that's a different type of, you know, connection that is – I don't think OBJ played with Aaron Rodgers in, in college, right? It's just what he did and his performance in the NFL has led to where he's at. Like, listen, I don't love the circus either. Um, what I would say is that right now the circus is not doesn't revolve around him. It's not his fault that we don't have him currently, right? It's just Green Bay, and they're, like he said, kind of dug their heels in a little bit as far as the compensation that they're looking for. My thing is yeah. they don't get on the plane. They just don't get on the plane unless that's been 90% of the way negotiated and worked out, right? Yeah. And, and to, yeah. to me, if I, JD is not putting – the first round pick in this year's draft on the table and saying, Oh, well, well, I know you want it, but you know, I'll get on a plane anyway. Cause maybe we can negotiate out of it. I don't think that was on the table until, you know, we went through this whole ordeal. Aaron Rodgers says, Hey, he wants to come here. And now, you know, green Bay says, Hey, well, let's squeeze some more compensation out of the jets because here we are. So um, it's not really his fault. And that's the only reason why I would say that I, I was you know, a little bit apprehensive to go down that route. But right now, chips in the middle of the table. Let's go. Like, you know, yeah. it, it kind of is what it I is. Mean, I mean, it, 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 here's my point. You know, um, what Kyle was saying earlier, as far as, you know, uh, uh, Rodgers being like the best option as far as skill. I'm with you and I agree with that. Um, I think he's the best option as far as being, you know, a quarterback, a skilled quarterback, even more than Lamar. You know what I'm saying? I think um, if you were to put them all in a vacuum, like Aaron Rodgers is the best skilled quarterback out of all of them. But uh, I don't trust Rodgers the way that I would trust Lamar because I feel like if Lamar were to sign with the Jets, he'd be all in and committed. And Aaron Rodgers still needs to prove to me that he's all in and committed because it, it's we, we, we're going to want to sign him for two years, right? But who knows where his head is going to be after this year when he comes to us right yeah well, they have a great name for him they they call him like a mercurial dude and a mercurial person is someone who like like you never know where they're going to go next you never know where they stand and i just having think i just like having things more solidified is that like, we, is that webster's definition or like where, where, where <laughs> there, i mean I, I mean I just... I'm, I'm paraphrasing but um but i'm right i'm right you know, well, Mercury's in retrograde, Brandon, uh, with this material, dude. Um, Look it up. I, I think that I, I think that he is predictable, though, um, in that. And just to peel the onion back a little bit as to our inner conversations about this. Um, I knew that that this dude would announce whatever he's going to announce on the Pat McAfee show. You did. And I was I was telling you guys, you know, the day before which I listened to the entire Pat McAfee show, um, you know, three hours that I can't get back out of my <laughs> life, um, you know, and and then it turns out, oh, he's coming on tomorrow. 
to talk about the uh you know the decision and you're right brian like the circ whatever circus is going on right now is not his circus he has already his circus has has come to town they put all the tents away and and it's left and now it's waiting to find wh which town it's going to go to next right i agree with that too i agree with yeah. that too. but, Kyle, but let me ask you a question do you feel good and do you feel confident not good but do you feel confident that we will have Aaron Rodgers uh, this year and next year for two years, two seasons. Yes. Okay. Wait. You know what? Right. I, I love your very deliberate answer. Me, yeah. I'm kind of like this, and I want to feel like this instead of like this. Is it the second year that makes you like unsure, or is it? It is the second year that makes me unsure because I feel like he's going to come this year, um, but we have to wait and see because Green Bay seems like they're holding more of the chips than we are. But it's the second year. Like I want him to fully commit. Because I don't know if we're going to make it to the Super Bowl, like what the media pundits are saying now. Like, when we get Rodgers, we're going to go to the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl or bust. Yeah, like, easy, easy, easy. We, yeah, ex exactly. Like, tranquilo a little bit, right? Like, just, There's a lot of stuff that, that, yeah, that just has to up, go right. Just ease up yourself, man. You know what I mean? Just <laughs> just, just break so wide. You know what I mean? So <laughs> <laughs> so that that's that's the thing. Like, I want him for two years. I want, uh, um, I want Wilson to sit back and watch his favorite quarterback for two years, all righty? You know, because we're holding on to him. You sit there and you take notes, boy, notes. Every, you know, every year, every play, whatever, just take notes and come out a better quarterback. But, yeah, sorry to step on you, Kyle, but I had to. I, I, I just, I, 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 I agree with you in that I think that Zach Wilson is more salvageable as, as an asset with Aaron Rodgers on the team with him. I mean, I, I I don't think that you can you can put a price value on the day to day um and how that would affect a quarterback like Zach Wilson um uh, to have Aaron Rodgers around. I mean you saw like there was an impact just from them practicing together uh last summer um in there, you know, like you know just there there's a it's 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 definitely there's an apprenticeship that can happen there that I think will benefit the young man, whether he stays on the Jets or not. A um, little disappointed that Mike White went to the Dolphins. Uh, I think it's it's better for him because um, I think Tua is even sure. a bigger question mark than than Zach Wilson is. Yeah, he's I knew um, he I knew yeah. he but yeah. but when you when you look at the um, the the upside to this, I think he will stay two years. Um, I think that he actually will probably participate in some off-season stuff if he comes, um, but it's really going to depend on timing. Um, are, is Green Bay going to going to hold out long enough with this that they're not going to take a, a a draft pick in this draft? No, nah, it's got to be um, it's got to be by the draft this year. It has to be. Yeah. I, you know, it, because even if you talk about a second round pick, it's going to be a high second round pick versus next year hopefully right it'll be a lower second round pick uh based on our performance maybe potentially going to the playoffs afc championship who knows right at the end of the day so for them i don't see them dragging it out further than this year's draft and um if that's the case it looks like jd is still you know doing his thing he's got Clayus campbell coming in i know brandon loves that piece uh Come I, on, baby. Come I, 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 love, I love it too man i love it too i would love you know, Calais and Q being next to each other right there in the middle, man. I mean, think about, you know, us harassing quarterbacks at that point with those two dudes. Yeah. Um that sounds like that sounds like a cognac, right? Calais and Q. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, BSOP. Yeah. Yeah, BSOP. <laughs> yeah. I, I I you know what though? Those this this whole development with Elijah Moore being traded to the Cleveland Browns and uh us sending a third round pick with him and getting a second round pick back having 42 and 43 um those two picks um is a very interesting development when you when you put it in this whole Aaron Rodgers Green Bay Packers discussion as well um the 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 idea that if we didn't trade the 13 the 42 or the 43 that 
for a second year in a row, we would get three high quality starters to put into um, on the offensive side of the ball. Whereas last year it was really adding three starter types. But um, I think we're going to have to lose either the 42 or the 43. Sure, to sure. Get Rogers. sure. I, I think, I think, I think maybe I, I would like the creativity of possibly um, swapping spots with, um, with green Bay and uh, giving them 13 and us taking their 15. I would do that. Uh, uh, as as part of this compensation, um, all the mocks that I've done, you know, I know I know this isn't a draft episode, but we've all been doing them. Yeah. Um, you know, Skaronsky is really the guy that I have targeted um, on that on that top end, and if he gets picked before thirteen, I I'm trading back, 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 back. Anyway, um, so. You know, unless you're gonna unless you're gonna take a really good player who's dropped far. How do you like um, Roderick Jones? I, I think that there's a lot of tackles in this draft. Yeah. And I don't want a guy that just plays tackle. I want a guy that is versatile and I want a center too. So we've talked about this on the thread that I think that the center position is one of the deepest positions in the draft. Um you have a a a center from Notre Dame who's like one of the top three guards when, um, you know, he's more projected as a guard, but he's been a two-year starter at center. Um, there's a lot of versatility in an Elijah Vera Tucker type way. Um, and that's what Skaronsky is, that that guard or tackle um, and, and could be that guy. But if you're not going to get him, then I'm looking at guard centers or I'm looking at a tackle that is a little further back. Like you can go even as deep as like a Matthew Bergeron from Syracuse, who could be a starting caliber offensive tackle. And you could get him in the, you know, third round, fourth round range um, based on most mocks. Um, so getting back to the, the lecture at hand though, you know, we're, we're talking about, um, compensation and and I think you could flip you could flip uh, first rounders one of those seconds maybe but if you could somehow figure out a way to keep one the 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 first round and the two second round picks for this year um, you're gonna you're gonna do something that's gonna help Aaron Rodgers to thrive even more so mm, yeah I don't, I don't disagree happy. yeah happy. I, I'm just I'm a little torn with the Elijah Moore trade I I would say. Um, I love the second round pick. I'm not going to say that I don't love that, um, but you do have a, a talented wide receiver, and we never got an opportunity to see what he actually could be. You know, with somebody under center that could get him the football um, consistently. So that's the one thing I would say um, is kind of like the bittersweet of that particular trade. He's going to thrive in Cleveland. You know, um, Sean Watson throwing him the football, uh, Amari Cooper out there as well. So you know, he's got. A running mate and um so i'm gonna just be looking over the fence like darn it <laughs> you know wish we could have uh made that but i I do like the um the hardman pickup you know from kc yeah. do to score 20 touchdowns i just think that they're two different wide receivers right i mean they're, they're both fast they're both shifty um McC hardman is more again could take it to the house on you know small hitch or something like that uh wide receiver screen uh, return return game, right? So he'll help you out in that space as well. Um, I think Elijah Moore, although he was short, he's an all around wide receiver. Somebody can play outside, play inside. Somebody that can catch a hundred balls, right? A, a year, um, get get you touchdowns or whatever else. Um, so that's that's where I think he'll really thrive. Um, and I'm just a little disappointed in that particular piece, but I'm happy to have that second round pick though. Something that provides flexibility. Definitely. Yeah. You know what, B? I mean, I, I, I hear where you're coming from. Um, I'm not as disappointed. You know, um, I, I think I'm disappointed a, a little bit from the standpoint of not being able to see um, him, like, kind of grow in our system or grow in our team more. But I feel like the pickup of Nicole Hardman, who's only 25, he runs a 4 3, three 40, whereas uh, yep. Elijah ran a 4 three, five, so he's a little bit faster. And he's a little bit shiftier, shiftier than um than than um Elijah. 
and he is, you know, he's like a multi-purpose. Like, just like you were saying, he can take it from like a hitch or a screen or a bubble, you know what I mean? A bubble screen or whatever and, and bring it to the house or gain extra yardage for, you know, a, a, a much needed first down. And he returns kicks and he returns punts. Um, and he was getting balls thrown to him in a great system from one of the greatest quarterbacks uh, ever. And we can say that right now. And that is, uh, you know, uh, Mahomes. So yeah. he knows what it's like to be great, to play in great situations, and to come through in a clutch. Yep. And I like having that on our team. And he can add something. I just hope yeah. that his off-season surgery on his hip yeah. heals everything up and that he's 100% by camp time. If so, I think we'll be thinking less and less about Elijah and more about McCole Hardman. I, I thought it was a, like a core muscle. Yeah, um, I thought it was core. I think, yeah, yeah. Ra- 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 I, 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 relatively minor. Yeah. Um, from you know, from 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 what I heard, I think if you look at it from the the position of yeah, Elijah Moore never really got the opportunity to thrive based on the quarterback situation. Uh, yeah, that's half true. Um, Garrett Wilson was offensive rookie of the year with no quarterback at all. Um, and, and he, and he was able to, to, to showcase his talent. Um, McCole Harmon was an option on a team full of options. Yep. Right. And still, and still, and still showed all that, that shine and, and that ability to make plays on a team in which, you know, Travis Kelsey is is scoring three touchdowns a game, it seemed like every time you watch them. Yeah. So um and there are other good receivers around him too. So I think that he comes in um more as a replacement for Berrios and uh Elijah Moore together. Um does a little bit of what both of them did. Um and I I'll you know I'll, I'll be interested to see like where Elijah Moore's sweet spot is, right? You know, is he an outside? Is he a Steve Smith? Right? Mm. It looks like a slot, but but plays like a, you know, like a traditional outside wide receiver. Mm. Um, Steve Smith. There's not Ooh. there's not a lot of people like that. You know, like go through the you know, the history of the NFL. Um, guys that were like six foot tall or under that were you're a premier number one you need to lock this guy down you need to you need to take him out of the game wide receiver i mean he's he's steve smith he's troy brown i mean i think that's his ceiling and that's a pretty high ceiling but like that that's what it, that's what it appears like to me um and i don't think i'm i don't think i'm talking badly about him and saying that so um could he be a cooper cup i guess is is the question Right. Um, you know, you know, that that would be my question. And then to back that up, what are your thoughts on the acquisition of Alan Lazard as well? I love it. Love it. I love the acquisition. I, I, yeah. I, I think that he was really growing um, in his role in Green Bay. Um, he was, uh, you know, um, growing with Aaron Rodgers. And I knew he was a big guy. But when I saw his his measurables, when we made the trade, and all these articles started coming about uh, coming out about him. I didn't realize he was 6'5", 227. Right. But you know, he's, he, he, he's, he's almost the same five. size as uh, Darren Waller. Yeah. Yeah. I think Waller is like in the latter part of the 230s, I think. And this yeah. guy is uh, uh, 227. And he's running a 4'5". Talk about red zone option. Talk about going huh. deep. Talk about going over the middle. And talk about Aaron Rodgers not being scared to throw to him because he always does. Yeah. And I think that he could have his best season yet. He's never hit a thousand yards, but you know, I mean, he's an undrafted rookie who came in. And how many undrafted rookies come in and have this have the success that he's having, or like have or like has a thousand yard season? You know, he's gonna come with uh, uh, Rodgers here. Um, he's probably gonna get a lot more balls here because they're coming into a new situation together where there's already trust. And then, um, you know, between him and, uh, and Garrett, I, we, we, we can do something. I just hope that Rogers stays here for two years. Hmm. Make, a, make, make a quick point about Rogers too. Like the, the thing he shares with Brady, in my opinion, 
um, and one of his best attributes is that he'll take a wide receiver room and he'll make it great. You know, it doesn't necessarily have all of the talent um, that another team may have, but he'll 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 make that great. Like he'll take an Alan Lazard or a Mercedes Lewis, um, you know, and yeah. and 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 those guys, and and he'll get them to the like to their peak performance level. So I, I don't know. The thing that concerns me about Alan Lazard is, I I mean, I don't think he's had more than sixty catches in a season, right? I don't think so, and I, he hasn't had more than seven hundred fifty yards either. But he I hasn't been he, in the league that long. I think he this might be his fourth year. I think he might he might have had ninety catches last year. Christian Watson hadn't come on at the end of the year, right? Uh, right. He took a, he took a lot of that away from him. But um, yeah, yeah. He, Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady always did a good job of making you know the 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 room the best it could possibly be by their play. So. I agree. Yeah, they they um they they up the level of of the people around them. Watch yeah. out for Tyler Conklin this year too, guys. Watch out yeah. for Tyler Conklin. Yeah, yeah, and and, and I would yeah. say this, I it's really and don't, and yeah. yo Brian, don't go drafting him before I do. No, 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 it's done, it's done. He, he's already scooped up, baby, he's scooped up. Yeah. So, so I, I would say so. Lazard, I like the deal. It, it sounds like a lot of money is forty four million, but it's really a two year deal at the end of the day, right? Um, based on um the guaranteed money. 22 million, I think, is the guaranteed. Uh, Lazard has only gone, like you said, Kyle, 60 receptions is his peak. But he had Devontae Adams, you know, running next mm -hmm. to him for the majority of the time that he's been there. So that's the other thing. I just want to make sure. I, listen, I want to bring in OBJ. Listen, bring up all, whatever talent. Just make sure Garrett Wilson still ends up as the top dog in that in that wide receiver room, right? We, yeah. we, don't, wanna, yeah. we don't want him to slip as far as his development is concerned. Uh, and that that boy gets open, you know, against press coverage, against anybody. So, and I'm sure, I'm sure Rodgers is going to recognize that and that talent and make sure that he gets the ball to him. That's all. Yeah, it seems like the um, the Lazard signing, um, you know, apart from the obvious Aaron Rodgers enticement part of it, um, it's similar to the Corey the Corey Davis thought process, where you take somebody who is not a one on the team that they're at that you think that Joe Douglas might think has the potential of being a one and you, you bring them in and you hope that that comes to fruition um, or a one a kind of thing. So Corey Davis was kind of like that, that one B to AJ Brown in Tennessee um, injuries have kind of made it so that he, that he hasn't totally seen his potential. That's what no. I was going to say. Yeah, that's what I was going to say because I don't think Lazard has the injury history right. as Corey Davis. Does, exactly, which is another plug. So that's a good point, Kyle. Does Corey Davis um, uh, stay on this team with the with a restructure? Or is he um, part of a package to Green Bay for Rodgers? What do you guys think about his future? I think it depends on how free agency continues to go. Yep, I think that they will keep him and restructure him if he agrees to that restructure. Um, but it depends when they get Rodgers. Um, and then from there, if they want to sign like a Calais Campbell or whomever, because they do have to address that nose tackle or that big defensive tackle position on the defensive line. We have no one. We have Solomon Thomas, who we re-signed to a one-year deal. Back and up. we have uh, Quinnen. And we also have to remember that Quinnen, we're going to sign him to a big money deal this year as well. Yep. So all that, you know, I, I would say it's less than 50% chance that Corey stays on the team. I'm going to drop him down to a 30% chance of staying on the team, but they know that they can have him there to kind of get rid of him if needed to save 10 million against the cap or 10.5, which is pretty big. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he, he, I, would think, he, I would think they want to get rid of him, but they will if they have to. So I think two things. A, he could be part of the Aaron Rodgers deal. You know, from a cap perspective, uh, it might make sense for them to make the trade and then end up cutting them or something like that. I think that I've read a couple of things there. And or if OBJ comes, he's gone. Right. I mean, there, there's no way that, you know, you keep him if you have OBJ on the team. It's just not enough football yeah. to go around. So. So the, how much does OBJ cost, though? 
Um, less than you think, I, I believe. I think it's going to be more incentive laden, right? Maybe a, a, a six million. Think of Hardman got a six million dollar deal at the end of the day. So maybe you pay him seven or eight, and then you give him incentives for the rest of it. Um, and I think that's where you go. That's one of the things that you get from Aaron Rodgers being part of your your franchise, right? I mean, then people will take less money in order to come here, in order to play, and you know, talented folks like OBJ who had options, less options now because Dallas ended up going in a different direction and trading for Brandon Cooks. So that closed one door for him. So there's less people out there that are going to pay OBJ on a prove it deal um, and put him in a position where he could potentially go to the Super Bowl. There's not a lot of teams that are out there uh, ready to do that. And we definitely supply both of those things when Aaron comes through the door. And you know what? Um, when the rumors first started coming out that uh, OBJ, uh, was thinking about the Jets amongst other teams as well, that when he came back that he wanted $20 million. That was completely false. Um, the latest news is that he is willing to come for less, but nothing less than $4 million a year. So that's a big difference remarkable. between $20 million and four. Yeah, that, that's sure. huge. <laughs> and just like what Brian was just saying, Nicole Hardman, we signed him for six point five. You know what I mean? If you want to give him a little grace, and bump them up to that or even seven, that's doable. And I don't see JD, meaning Joe Douglas, signing to, signing uh, um, him to anything more than a, a two-year deal. It's probably going to be a one-year prove-it deal. Yeah. And then we'll give you, you know, uh, four million and give you maybe three more in incentives because, you you, you know, that, that knee of yours. You know what I'm saying? Okay, great. You look great working out. And we see you on uh, on Twitter catching balls and everything, running good routes. but we got to see you out there. So, you know, $4 million incentivized, bump it up to 6.5, maybe 7, hop on the team, and uh, just add to this receiver room. You know what I mean? I, I'd be happy with that. And then Mims, you just, uh, you know, you'll be the fifth receiver. Hope you make the team. And you could be another big possessing, you know, possessive receiver and show that 4-3 speed when you get a chance to, bro, and run better routes. All right? Be disciplined. I, I wonder if you would get more for – Mims now than you would having them hang around and not people thinking that he's just going to get released anyway or cut. Um, I don't I think he's going to cut. I don't think he's going to get cut. I think he's either going to get traded or stay on the team because he's on the cheaper side than not. I'm sure he's probably been offered to Green Bay. I mean, I'm guessing. I'm not sure. But I'm just saying, in my GM head, I'd be offering him and, say, Corey, and then, like, you know, a pick or maybe swapping, you know, me dropping down to 15, they get 13, and I give you Corey and Mims. Let's go. Give me Aaron, who doesn't want to be there anyway, and you don't want him there anyway, so stop playing. Yeah. You know? Stop playing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's one thing, because, you know, guys, uh, even before all this, and we've been texting – and I'm texting you guys early in the morning. I'm at work. I'm texting. I'm I'm fired up in a not so good way. I'm kind of getting frustrated and angry. Yes, I did not <laughs> want Aaron Rodgers. But now that we have him, I'm a Jets fan. Okay. I'm a Jets fan. So not well, we don't have him yet. But now that it's we don't have him till we have him. Right, exactly. Now yeah. that it's projected that we will have him. He's not here yet. Um, we won't have him until we have him. That's a great, great point, Captain. Um, I'm a Jets fan. So I'm going to support this because well we don't have any other options so i kind of have to but <laughs> i'm gonna support this well we do have another option lamar jackson is still out there let's let's just call it what it is and if this yeah. thing completely implodes um i mean i have no problem you know calling that dude up um or whoever's playing his go-between right now is i have Aaron. no problem either <laughs> but you know what we're not in that fraternity of nfl owners you know what i'm saying no. and they're not gonna do it they're not gonna do it and 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 Lamar is a man of character. He's standing firm on what he wants as far as you know, he wants guaranteed money. Guaranteed money. Yeah. And he knows he's worth more and has proven his worth more than um than than Watson. Yeah. And but I don't even want to I don't even want to go down this rabbit hole, but collusion. Nah, nah. Collusion. Yeah. Collusion. And we we could just call it that. Well, did you <laughs> see the did you see the clip of Ozzie Newsom? talking yeah. and, and, and yeah, saying how, you know, how big a mistake 
the Cleveland Browns made giving Deshaun Watson, you know, it, well, he, he didn't say it in that way. He said, you know, are we going to find out that that was not the way to go? Right. He definitely you know? uh, is, that an out, is that an outlier or is that the way things are going to go from here on listen, out? Listen, listen, but didn't, didn't Kirk Cousins get a guaranteed deal at, at one point? Am I, am I, am I missing that point? Didn't he get a, a, a fully guaranteed deal? The second deal he had in Minnesota? Or went or the first deal he had going to Minnesota? The first deal he had going to Minnesota was was a while ago and he leveraged the Jets against Minnesota and used us to get more money out of Minnesota. But I do not remember that being fully guaranteed. Yeah, I think he had maybe the most guaranteed at that time. And at that time he'd make up until like last year, he's made the most money of anyone in the in, in, in the NFL, I think. And let's remember, he went through uh uh what is it? Oh my gosh. Um he was franchised twice before he was able to even make that move. You know? Okay. So, so if he so if let's, Lamar let's... were to do the same thing, he's gonna have to gut it out, get franchised, and then get franchised again, and then let's you know let's back up the truck. Let's back up the truck. I'm reading it right now. So Kirk okay. Cousins. First quarterback ever to sign a fully guaranteed multi-year deal, a three-year, eighty-four million dollar pack with the Vikings, okay. tw- twenty eighteen through twenty twenty seasons. Eighty-four okay. million okay. fully guaranteed. So All right. it's not two hundred fifty. I mean, you know what I mean? No. That's a little different. Uh, but he did get a fully guaranteed contract for multi years. I think it was three years. Gotcha. It was at twenty. It was at twenty million per. Um, so three years. I mean, you're you're talking about almost thirty million to twenty six, maybe. You know, three for eighty seven. Three for eighty four. Three for eighty four. Yeah. Me and Brandon were in um, we're in the the math class that is like a little behind <laughs> everybody else's. It's twenty eight so, million a year. <laughs> I'll rely on Brand on Brian. <laughs> yeah, Actually, you know what, Brian Brian is real good at math. He's a no, he's more of a numbers. <laughs> I'm more yeah, of a we social were... science guy, English, you know what I mean? That's me. <laughs> what was our teacher's name? You remember our teacher's name? Uh, uh it was a guy. I don't yeah. remember. We were like his we were like his uh his sweat hogs and welcome back cop. Mr. Gorecki. You remember that teacher? <laughs> no, Gorecki. it wasn't Mr. Gorecki. <laughs> Mr. Gorecki was a social studies teacher in the in the, in the eighth grade. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I actually liked him. I thought he was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he was a little tough though, but yeah, I liked him. But, you know, I always like social studies and history and all that stuff. But, uh, yeah. So, you know, let me just add on this. Here's the one thing that will have me kind of like, uh, you know, kind of being a little bit more warm hearted towards Aaron Rodgers. He's not allowed to go to the facility or do anything or go to, you know, OTAs and all that other stuff if he's not officially a member of the Jets. But what he can do is on his own without coaches. And without any influence from the team, if if it's pretty much deemed in you know inevitable that he's going to be a Jet, it just turns it just it just depends on when he could fly the guys out to you know Malibu, California, where he has his house, pick a nice field, fly all the receivers and running backs and tight ends out there, and have a little week throwing camp, right? Call it the A Rod camp, you know what I mean? And uh, you know, me and Kyle can go out there. And Kyle said, hey, I did Joe Namath's camp once, and Brandon wanted to do it, but he didn't get a chance to. But uh, we can make it up to him now. <laughs> we'll be your counselors. Yeah, exactly. We'll be your counselors, you know what I mean? You know, we'll we'll wear the uh, the tight uh, shorts and tight T-shirts with the socks rolled all the way up. Whoa, you know? whoa, pause, pause, pause. <laughs> pause. <laughs> Zach Wilson will be in Idaho uh, and, and wondering where everybody is because yeah, he had right? that fake uh, – thing in Idaho last year everybody seemed to love that too um right. I don't know I I, I think that that would I don't be more know. of an endearing look if, if, if Rogers did that so that's all I'm saying I don't know if he actually can do that because he is actually under contract he can do it I, I was told that he can do it who by but Greeny was- Greeny <laughs> Greeny actually bought the property. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, it's like they have the tight end camp, right? I mean, so they have all yeah. the tight ends that come in. They have different NFL quarterbacks or whatever that come in. I think That's Zach Wilson true. was That's out true. there uh, as one of the quarterbacks one year. So they can do that. 
They can organize something yeah. like that. Yeah. Just no That's coaching right. influence. No coaches right. cannot be there. Right. No one from the staff can be there at all. It's a players only thing that the players organize and pay for themselves. They can do that. The way that this whole thing has played out too, it makes the LaFleur um, departure look a lot less, um, you know, of a, of a firing than uh we need you to do this or we're not going to get this other thing done. Where did he um, land? He landed the Rams, in the Rams, right? The Rams, Rams yeah. yeah. He's their OC, right? Yeah. Won't be the, the play caller at the end of the day, but he's going to be pass, uh, pass game or run game. One something of the, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So he's not the overall OC, but he's run game or pass game coordinator. Is that what it is? Yeah. It's an equivalent okay. job to what he was doing before he came uh, with the Jets. Yeah. So, yeah, but it, it seems as though if if you if you tie all the things together, that the Nathaniel Hackett piece of this was, you know, the first thing you had to do in order for this Aaron Rodgers, you know, I intend to play for the New York Jets communication to come across on the Pat McAfee show, um, and now, you know, you you see it as the, it, it was much more of a of a of a needed piece. It was a chess piece in the whole thing. I'll tell you what, I also read a bit that Alan Lazard likes um Hackett as well a lot. Right. Teaching wise, like he thinks he's a really good teacher. Yeah. So all those things. Yeah, yeah. And we all know that Rogers loves him. And it's not just from, you know, watching sports shows like I read a number of articles. He just speaks so highly of him as just a wonderful, like you said, Kyle, a wonderful teacher. Mm-hmm. So, um I hope he's a better teacher than his dad, you know, because we had him yes. as a on, on the Jets a while back. And, you know, I remember all of us, we weren't too happy with him. <laughs> and never like Paul Hackett. No. Yeah. No. You know, no, not at all, you know. But, uh, but yeah, you know, listen, I mean, all I can do now is just continue to root for my Jets. Um, the, 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 uh, the, the whole Aaron Rodgers thing, that taste is no longer sour in my mouth. Um, I am pause. willing to embrace him. <laughs> yeah, pause, pause, pause. Yeah. And <laughs> you just meandered a little bit too long there, man. Yeah, I know. I just said embrace him. You know, I just said that's that's really weird. Sour taste in my mouth. Now I want to embrace him. Pause. You know what I mean? So uh, listen, come on. How about that? Let's just let, <laughs> let's go. So listen, guys, we kind of melded everything into one. I loved how the show has been flowing. We talked about Rogers a lot. We talked about uh, free agents. Uh, we talked a little bit about um, uh, draft and who we and, and, and who we want. You know, if we want to just end it with just a quick little thing on the draft, I want to move on to a topic before we get to uh, after we get to that that we haven't spoken about in a while. So um, Kyle touched on the draft a little bit. I just want to say one thing. I don't want Jalen Carter, okay? Um, if he drops, because I have a feeling he's going to drop. If he drops to 13, I don't want him, and here's the reason why I don't want him. He was a great talent at Georgia in college, did a great job, great job. But I'm a big guy. It sounds corny. I'm a man of character. Yeah, well, you're daggone right, all right? You don't come to the biggest day up to this point in your football career ever in life you don't go to the combine out of shape and all of your measurables are like this thumbs down when you had a great college career and now you go to the combine. Okay. Out of shape. You can't do it. You can't do it. So that to me makes me not want Jalen Carter. I'd rather take a roll of the dice elsewhere. And um, also, you know, that just makes me want an offensive tackle more anyway at the number 13 spot. And I like the kid, like what Kyle and I, and all of us have been talking about from early on now, the kid out of uh, Northwestern. And if not him, I happen to like Broderick Jones actually as well. So, but I like uh, the kid out of Northwestern a little bit more, even though he's got shorter arms, but he can play tackle and or guard. Yeah, that's, that, that would be my, my targeted pick. I, I, I told you guys on the text thread that, I like him as much as I liked AVT uh, a few years ago. And you guys know that I was um, doing everything I could to to try to figure out how to trade up to get him. Um, 
uh, which Joe Douglas, I guess, was doing at the same time. And, and, and that worked out. And uh, he was playing at an all pro level until uh, he got hurt last year. So I expect him to come back. I am uh, pleasantly surprised at all these photos that I'm seeing of uh, Becton. Um, he looks, he looks like he's about three Oh five. Yawn. Right now. Yawn. Um, and uh, it, it, it would be a nice bit of icing on the cake. If, by the end of the year next year, by the time we start the new season of uh, of the BKBK podcast next year, if Becton started, you know, 12, 13 games at right tackle, um, I think that would be a real, real big step in the right direction. And it, I think it would say a lot about how well we were doing, too. Um, you know, or even at left tackle, if, um, you know, if, if a Dwayne Brown wasn't there to do that um or draft pick so i would say pete uh skaronsky i i always feel like i'm saying that wrong skaronic or skaronsky it's one of those two it's that's why i kept saying the kid from northwest the kid from northwestern <laughs> yeah um you know he's also coming like the last guy uh slater from northwestern is doing great in the nfl um so he's coming from that same pedigree um, but if he's not there, um, I sent you guys a mock yesterday and that's why I think why you led with the Jalen Carter thing is, is that Jalen Carter had fallen to 13, um, and I picked him, um, actually, that was, yeah, part of it. that was part of it, but also yeah. I just realized how much we do need a defensive tackle, a big defensive tackle to play next to our three technique. So that's, that's huge as well. So. I'd say 50, 50% because of what you put, another 50% because of the big need that a lot of people I feel like are kind of borderline dismissing. None of us here in our group, but people out there, other fans, you know, they keep talking O-line, O-line, and we do need that, but we need a, we need a big boy in the middle for that defense. Yeah. It's pretty nice to be in, like, March, April and not be talking about needing an edge. No, yeah. I mean, I, I, I draft one. I mean, if it if it made sense. Um, and you know, he was really head and shoulders above or somebody that dropped. That's what I would, that's why I would say Jalen Carter, if he drops and he's there at 13 and Skronsky is off the board, I'm picking him. Right. I mean, I, I, I I'm picking him and, and, you know, you bring him in, bring him in the building, um, you know, get him to where we need to be. We have some teachers in the building as well on the defense, obviously, with our head coach. Yep. Um, and so <laughs> think about it, though, B, and I know you're kind of scratching up your face. Jalen Carter, <laughs> Q, and Calais Campbell there rotating at defensive tackle. Come on. I mean. If, if coach Sala gets his kid's head screwed on, and this was like an aberration, and, you know, sorry, Coach, you know, I had stuff going on with this case. I couldn't really work out as much, right. and right. that is screwed on and everything. Yeah. And I'm, and then yeah, I mean, like it would be like, you know what I mean? Sure, it would It'd be great. Sure, but I'm not a, I'm not a soothsayer. I'm not a fortune teller. I just don't know. Yeah, and I would say this: I want to get a, a safety out of this draft, right? Somewhere it doesn't have to be high, because I think there is some safety talent on the back end of this draft. Maybe in the fourth round, picking somebody up. Um, the guy out of Boise State, I think, is somebody that um, you know, I'm looking at uh real heavily, but I want to get a safety. That was one of the, if not the most the, the weakest link we had on the defense, right? Yeah. It was the back end. So if we right. can scoop somebody up that we can cultivate, play that free safety position, um, not get burnt and be out of position and all of those other things. Um, think of the Detroit game. It's like, come on, man. How do how we lose it on that play, man? You know what I mean? It's just like, come on. So um, that's one of the things I want to make sure we come out of this draft, obviously, outside of offensive tackle and center and uh, the things we already mentioned. Yep. The Chuck Clark acquisition helps with the safety part. It does. It does. Um, <clears throat> because because I, I also think that White Whitehead, his, his season last year was a down year that could be followed by a really good year. Um, you know, he, he played really well in Tampa. So if you if you pair up Chuck Clark and Whitehead, we might not need one. But I have been drafting right around the time that you're talking about um, Brian safeties, uh, Jair 
uh, Brown, I think, from uh, Penn State. I was is just one that. Yep. comes up a lot. Um, you know, six foot, two hundred five pound safety um, that can fill and and cover. So um, Sydney, uh, I'm, Jair, my, I think his last name is Walker, and Sydney Brown is the one from Illinois. Um, right. I'm starting to dig into my my draft manuals now. Um, I, I I also drafted that Cody Mouch guy. Um, if you remember him from the Senior Bowl, he's the one with his gut out. Um, <laughs> he's a like a like a, a brawler from North Dakota, so kind of like kind of like those dudes as linemen too. You know. So guys, um, you know, I love all this football talk, but uh, we've got playoffs coming up. And guess what sport? Basketball. basketball. To the hoop. Basketball. Basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. it. And we got the New York Knicks, baby. New York Knicks. Knicks. So uh, listen, we've got the Knicks, and they are definitely playoff bound. The team looks a lot stronger than, say, last year, in my view. Um. What do we need? When I say we, of course, I mean the Knicks. What do we need to kind of make a pretty deep playoff push in the playoffs this year? Like, I feel like we can do it, but you know, when you're losing to Orlando you out of nowhere, it. sometimes it kind of throws a little monkey works and monkey wrench into my thoughts there. So I, I don't know. So they've lost three in a row, not just Orlando. Yeah, that's uh, true. That's just yeah, one that sticks yeah. out of my mind. And and listen, that you. You said, you know, we're basically in the playoffs. We are not in the playoffs yet. So let's let's make sure we're clear about um, where we are. We are um, a game and a half. We're in the fifth slot right now. A game yep. and a half ahead of the Nets. And two games ahead of the Heat. The Heat, if we end up in seven, that puts us in the play-in tournament, which means yeah. that you're not guaranteed a spot in the playoffs. I also don't want to end up in the sixth seed because I don't want to play the 76ers in the first round. Um, the way they are playing right now, uh, they're just a beast. And if you're asking, and the question was, you know, what do we need in order to to show up in the playoffs, play well and all of that, um, and to finish out the year strong, I need Jalen Brunson in the lineup. And yeah. I, need, I need that boy healthy, right? Um, you're not healthy, huh? Yeah, man, he's, he's not. He's been the foot, I think, has been the, the ailment um, that has kept him out of the lineup or – play the first half, not play the second half, those type of things. And we, we can't afford that. He's our leader unquestioned. He is the person in the in the um the fourth quarter that really brings it home. Uh and he gets Julius in the right frame of mind. All those other things uh that are needed in order for us to write this ship. Yeah, I see you snickering because Julius is just losing his wig. And the losses that we had, man, it's crazy. And quickly and quickly can't 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 no. get his head together. No. It, Brunson can get his head together, he but quickly no. he can't do it. No, he doesn't respect <laughs> respect quickly enough at this point uh in his career in order to be able to do that. But Jalen definitely yeah. commands his respect. He's shown it on the court. He's been our best player all year, and we need him down the stretch because I mean we're losing to the Orlandos of the world, uh the Timberwolves without their top two players. Um, our defense has been suspect um, recently as well. And listen, we play Miami again before it's all said and done. We play Houston, which is you know we should beat them, but we should beat yeah. we should have beat Orlando right hands yeah. down. So uh, we really need him back in the lineup, and hopefully the couple of days off that we had recently will you know get him back to where he needs to be. And and um, I think we need to play Cleveland. Cleveland is a good opportunity for us to get a first round victory. Because um, I think although they have Donovan Mitchell and they got some some dogs on that team, it's an opportunity. I think we can, we could beat that team. I think we could beat them. We can beat them, but I feel like they're more consistent than we are. I feel like we can be like this, and out of nowhere we go like this. Whereas sure. the highs and lows for Cleveland are not as dramatic. They're a little bit more steady. So that's what kind of scares me a little bit. Uh, I think. What, I what think about R.J.? How is has R.J. turned? more positive as you know like the last five games or so or not i think so i mean rj scores 20 points a game i mean 
it's that's his average. Yeah. Um, you know, we we have three twenty point a game scores on the on the court in starters when we have Jalen Brunson on the floor. I agree with everything that Brian said. By the way, um, I think the biggest thing also that we have to play playoff style defense. Right, we have to turn it up a notch. Um, I hate to say this because I love Mitchell Robinson. He's not but, happy. Um, but I think Isaiah Hartenstein is outplaying him uh, right now. Um, and and I see I, I see the way Tibbs sees it as he really wants Hartenstein in that second group because he likes the vibe of that second group, right? So even when when Mitch was hurt, he played uh, Jericho Sims as a starter and still brought Hartenstein off the bench for most of the winning streak that they had. But um, Hartenstein's playing really, really good. He is. I'd like him as soon as we got him. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't play well, like, initially. I think he was trying to find his role, and with, I think, the Clippers, he was almost like a point five, right, where he was right. dishing at the top of the key, and so they had him doing different things, which he can do, but Tibbs didn't want him – doing that he's like i need you under the basket rim protection i need you rebounding i mean the guy doesn't even look to shoot which when he was shooting before it didn't seem like he was in the right place on the floor his floaters weren't active or or effective rather they weren't dropping but right now he's the role he's playing he's playing the heck out of it um and to your point yeah he's he's playing better than mitchell at times um which you can see it in the amount of minutes that he plays well, you also like Josh Hart and Hartenstein are like double double guys. Yeah. And they're not starters. Yeah. You know, like I can't believe how many rebounds Josh Hart gets as a guard playing the minutes that he plays. Yeah. Six um, five. Only six five and he's getting those rebounds. Yeah. He's he he's he's very catalytic. He he he, he makes things happen. I think that as we as we proceed, if we're going to proceed, you know, to that destination of Cleveland, which I agree also is a good matchup. I think Boston is a good matchup, actually. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think that uh, yeah. I think that we play very well against Boston, but you don't want to play Boston in the first round. You want to play Boston um, after after you've gotten a, a series under your belt. Yeah. Um, but I think you know we I think we've gone five hundred with Boston this year. Um, no, I think I we, also I think we beat them. Um, I think we won the season series. I'm gonna check it out though. We did. Um, well, I mean, we lost a lot of games to the Nets up until the end. Um, and then you have um, the 76ers. I think we've beaten at least once, if not twice. And I think so, we finally beat the Nets after the big trade. You know. Yes. Yes. We beat them twice after the trade. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I'll take it. Give me the win. I can't stand it. Yeah, but the Nets actually, um, they look like they, they had, you know, they, they, they traded away those assets, but they got some young assets like uh, Bridges. Looks like yeah. he's the real deal and he's going to be in a place where he can actually um, shine. And, and Dinwiddie was really good when he was on the Nets before. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's a reset for them. Um, but, uh, for the Knicks, I think that they they need to play better defense. They need to be healthy, and if they're not healthy, they may need to pull on one of those people that have been sitting for a long time to help them out, like Rose, um, or uh, or Evan Fournier. You know, with some a, a few minutes here and there. I love McBride though. I love the way McBride's been playing, and I don't really want to take any minutes away from McBride. Um, if we can get away with it, uh, the guard, the guard play has been pretty stellar. McBride is is, funny thing about McBride is McBride's kind of like Rick Brunson was, Mm. Mm. you know, he comes in, he he would come in and he would, and he would contribute from that third guard point guard position when it was needed. What's going on with Grimes? I mean, uh, ever since we got heart, not hearing that much from him. I do. I still do believe in him as a really good player, solid player. And then also, just to add on that, 
we were talking about Mitch before, and I didn't get to it. Mitch, you know, I'm reading on reading some articles. He doesn't seem to be happy. You know, he's not really happy with the amount of playing time that he's getting. I think it's more of the role um, where he's not scoring, right? And that has dropped. And what I kind of read is that we're doing a lot of isolation. Uh, Julius is definitely somebody who's in isolation anyway. But then on top of that, Brunson does the same, you know, Mm -hmm. and they're effective when they do play in isolation. But, you know, we are low on the total pole as far as assists are concerned. And so there's not um, as many opportunities for lobs um, as in past years uh, for Mitch. So there really is no offense. If he's not getting it there, he's trying to, you know, get offensive rebounds and maybe putbacks. But that's all he's doing out there on the court. So I can see him being a little frustrated um, with that particular piece. Just to go back to something we said previously, we actually uh, beat Boston three games um, to one this year as far as season series. I think we actually beat them three games in a row. Um, so, you know, yeah, so we're, we're doing pretty well uh, against Boston. Um, but I mean, listen, Mitch, you got to do what you got to do. We can work things out through the, the rest of the, uh, the season Grimes. I think, again, there's a lot of isolation. I think Grimes should get more touches, but he just, maybe he gets five to six shots a game. You know, he just doesn't get a lot of touches out there with three 20 point scorers in the starting lineup. That's what ends up happening. I think maybe if he went to the um the second unit he probably get more opportunities um but he doesn't close you know unless it's for defensive purposes but if we right. need offense then you have quickly out there you know that'll take his spot or whatever um so he's just not getting as many minutes um yeah. but you know listen I'm, I'm not down on him at all i think no nah, man it's know, a good problem to have it's a good problem to have yeah absolutely you you could definitely um switch heart and uh and Grimes in the starting lineup and do exactly the same thing at the to close the game that you have been doing. Because it's always Josh, Josh Hart that's out there at the end. It is. I like I like Josh Hart coming off the bench though a little bit. Um I do too. Because I think he's a leader for those guys that him and Quickly and him and Hart and he just has, you know, that kind of um, you know, just they're just building something, you know, in that second unit. So I do like him out there for that. But Hart is limited in the half court set to three pointers or that's it um where he gets a lot of points is in the fast breaks transition where yeah. he'll drive he'll, he'll, yeah he'll drive you know uh, baseline to baseline and uh and finish yep. that way yep but he, he's not that he's not that good off the dribble he doesn't really create his own shot right he's more of a complimentary player whereas i think quentin grimes and quickly are can both create off the dribble um as well as shoot from three quickly so, more so but yeah grimes can you know he's he's developing more um of that he needs to take it more to the rack and try to ham it on people and i think he's 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 starting to do that more yeah he, you know? he's had a couple of uh of missed dunks that way too right um, <laughs> right so he's so. just got to keep going at it man he's his first step is lightning fast and so you could do that, and obviously you have to respect his jumper um, as well. Mm-hmm. So I think he'll continue to develop, man, but I like Grimes. Defensively, he's great. Oh, yeah. Speaking of driving to the basket, like why does RJ get swatted so much? <laughs> he's six foot seven, and I, I just – I've never seen someone – like he gets swatted so much going towards the basket or even trying to do like a little, you know, like a little drive and then stop and do like a, a medium jumper. He gets swatted, man. I, I don't know. Whatever. You know, I, I like RJ, but I just feel like he's not I, – I, I feel like what he lacks is explosiveness. He's technically good, but he doesn't have much explosion, you know, in his game. And I think that's what's kind of bothering me about his game. And and vision, too. You know, when, when he decided to go, and Julius is the same way. When he decided to go, then yeah. you, when you come late with the double team, then yeah. you know they have nowhere to go. Like they don't. Uh, no, it's just they're stuck. Yeah, blinders mm-hmm. are on, and I'm just gonna go regardless of the matchup has changed from when I started. When I first had the ball, and now I'm driving. The matchup has changed. The defense has changed, and they don't react right um, to that as well. So that's why I think it leads to him going to the basket, and then he's you got a big man there, and he's like, no, poop, <laughs> like done, like yeah. we're out of here. So yeah. Like, uh, you know, Julius is like, uh, 
He's a. I think he's an excellent player, but he's not a general. You know what I mean? He's, oh heck no. He's like a. You know. I don't know, a colonel or something, you know? So. Oh, heck no. He's, he's soldier <laughs> all day. He took as a lieutenant? Soldier all day, you know what I mean? He can, <laughs> he can be a sharpshooter. You just put him, up, you put him up there and just let him shoot. Like, that's what you do. You don't do anything he's else. A, he's a lieutenant. You're going to stay up there, and you're just going to pick people off, right? Like, that's it. <laughs> soldier boy. Listen, uh, let's cue up that music, man, because uh, – First one for the new season, all right? Tweak me, peak me. This is where we talk about things that we like and things that we don't like so much. That's right. Here we go. All right. Go yeah. for it. That's that different beat for Tweak Me, Peak Me. That's right. This is a quick segment, folks, where we talk about things, like I said, that we like and that we don't like so much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mercy. <laughs> All right. You know, I'm going to start this one up, start this one off since I'm kind of, you know, being a little chatterbox right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to start with Peak Me. All right. The things that are pleasurable to the eye. All right. I just want to say congrats to the Baldwin Bruins, all right? Round of applause for the Baldwin Bruins. All right. Boys basketball team and girls basketball team. Our alma mater, Baldwin uh, High School. Uh, the boys, they are uh, Nassau County champs once again, led yep. by Coach Darius Sarati. All right, Young D, great job, man. Great job, man. Darius not, so, not so Young D anymore. Not so Young D. <laughs> Just Young so Girl D, that's it. Yeah, he keeps winning. Yeah, he, he's a year younger than us, but, uh, you Always, know, it's yeah. all good. Great job, Young D. Appreciate that. And also, the ladies, not only are they county champions, but they're also Long Island champions once again. Yes, sir. All righty. So, yeah. So, congrats to the ladies. Congrats to the gents. Yeah. Great job, Baldwin Senior High School. Way to put out good product. And you know what? To give these young kids great experiences that they will cherish for the rest of their lives. And hopefully, because of those relationships and those moments that they have, that they'll come together years later and have a podcast like the BK BK podcast like <laughs> what we're doing right now. Because we had a, we had a seven and one season. And we had the best record for 20 years until uh, you know, <laughs> we lost in the playoffs. But whatever, it's all good. But yeah, uh, but we did st we did start a playoff run that lasted almost uh, 20 years after that. That's right. <laughs> all righty. So that's at least my I think. Team. At least I think so. I, maybe they didn't make playoffs the next year. I don't remember. Yeah, very next year. Yeah, no. I think very very next year. Yeah, they made yeah. It, no. but I think the year after we did. We start. Yeah. We start. We start. We were uh, Coach Carroll's first playoff team yes uh, we were yes yep and we had the best record in 20 years since then so that's great big four champs all righty and uh you know the tweak me part of what i'm going to say is it's basically this whole stalemate with the green bay packers this whole process from the beginning has been straight up annoying for me personally you know so as the brits say oh let's get on with it all righty <laughs> <laughs> let's get on with it you know, I'm hearing that the Packers, because they technically don't have to pay Aaron Rodgers until like August or something like that. So they may be willing to even hold out with this deal, which I doubt. I think they're going to try and get something before the draft because you don't want to waste that. But you never know. Right. I'm not in the front office. Um, but let's just get this going. I want this done now. I want Rodgers to be in the weight room, conditioning, getting strong. You know, upper body, lower body, getting that broken thumb all together, making sure he's good. You know, no more darkness. Come out into the light, bro. Okay? <laughs> come out into the light. All righty? And uh, come out into the light and greet your receivers and your whole team and uh, have some great off-season camps or whatever you want to do and uh, build a relationship and be a great leader and be a great example for Zach Wilson. You know, I feel sorry for this kid, Zach. Gee whiz. But you know what? I You're don't. just going to man up and – um. You know, take your uh, your cod liver oil each day, all righty. <laughs> you know, and 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 a shot of glucose, right? When I was a kid, I used to have to take fish oil, and and a, and a spoonful of glucose every day. That's weird, right? 
This is before I moved out to uh, Long Island. I just remember that. You know, that's why your skin is so smooth. Is that is that is that what made it? It's the anti aging (laughs) formula. Call me Denzel. (laughs) Who calls you that? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, but who's next? Who wants to go uh, tweak me, pig? All right, I'm tweaked by the fact that I had to watch the Pat McAfee show twice, (laughs) Um, and uh, you know, it was it was a lot. And a lot for a young man to go through. Um, that would be my tweak me. I, I am piqued by the idea of uh, the Jets being a destination for free agents. Um, yeah. You know, we we had a lot of discussion about how um, both with the Knicks and with the with the Jets, how it, it, nobody wanted to come, and it was hard to it was hard to talk people into it. So I like the pioneers, like. Um, like Tyra Conklin and and CJ Uzama and 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 those guys that were you know, you know going to come to this team and and, and do something. So it, it's it's good to know that uh, that people want to come and play with Aaron Rodgers if that's the case, or for Robert Sala and get in that room and and, and play. Uh, it's good to know. Yeah. Um, so listen, I mean, for did you get do the tweak? Yeah, the tweak was the Pat McAfee show. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, sorry, you started with the tweak. All right. So um so for me, yeah, the the A Rod effect, you know, which you mentioned, Kyle, um, is definitely a peak for me. Um, to think we went from not being in the playoffs and how we ended last year to potentially being in the conversation for the Super Bowl. Right, it's just crazy, and in one off season, so that's definitely a peak, and and the Knicks obviously are a peak as well. Um, am I missing something? What's going on? Uh, <laughs> um, and then you know the Knicks obviously being playoff bound potentially was a peak as well. Uh, so I would say that. Um, listen, potential tweak. I would say is the Anthony Volpe situation right now i just gotta figure it out if it's uh going down that path or not so so shortstop um for the yankees oh yeah um playing lights out right now and um it's like dude listen you know right now he's playing almost like the best player out there um start that dude i don't care how old he is man (laughs) like we need an infusion on the yankees especially um, at shortstop. So that boy needs to start right now. And um, the fact that they haven't announced it yet, uh, and God forbid they announce that they're going to send him down to the minors. I mean, I don't even know what that's all about. But anyway. Well, the other thing with the Yankees is that their pitching, uh, their starting pitching is like thin as, as uh, you know, paper mache right now. Maybe paper mache isn't thin. I don't know. Um, tissue paper. But the uh, the yeah, who, who somebody else just went on the the shelf the other day, uh, Severino. Yeah. So, uh, so now Severino's lat continues to get strained, and he's out two months last year with the lat strain, and now you don't know, and 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 it's you know, it's Nestor, it's it's Cole, it's Nestor Cortez, and, and uh, everybody else. Like a and bunch of yeah, else. yeah, you got a, a bunch of people that would have been. You know, fourth or fifth starters that are now bumping bumped up in there. So, um, be interesting with the Yankees, uh, and then the the poor Mets with uh, the World Baseball Classic. Yeah, uh, that was. Uh, if I was a Met fan, I'd be quite tweaked on that. <laughs> so, yeah, but I'm not. I'm not a Met fan. I never will be a Met fan. That's right. Ever, ever. Ever, I thought ever? he was Martin Gramatica. Ever, ever. ever. <laughs> yeah, never. That dude fell out like Martin Gramatica. Remember that? Sure. Right. Yeah. Like um, like uh, the dude uh, who, who was the um the quarterback that uh that like headbutted somebody and then he was out for the rest of the he was the, the Redskins quarterback when uh, they were the Redskins. Uh, yeah. Was it Gus Farrat? Gus Farrat. Yeah. <laughs> Touchdown celebration. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's crazy. 
So, all right, guys, thanks for watching another episode of the BKBK podcast. We want to be able to keep bringing you the latest news and viewpoints of where sports and the culture collide and the New York Jets reign supreme. So please keep watching. You can find us on Facebook on our BKBK podcast fan page, Twitter at BKBK podcast, Instagram at BKBK podcast, as well as on YouTube. Just type in BKBK podcast. All right, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button when we're done here. You know, I'm going to put it on our YouTube channel, so make sure you do that. <laughs> Brian, Brian's texting me. <laughs> All right, stop. And, <laughs> we have fun and you, here, B. We have fun. Yeah, yeah. You can just listen to us on iTunes as well, man. Uh, you can just go to uh, bkbkpodcast.automatic.com to do so. So, all right, that's it, guys. Let's go Jets. Let's go Baldwin Bruins. Let's go Team BKBK. We are out. Get it done, JD. Get it done.